Hey everyone, Eric here. Net dollar retention, especially for enterprise SaaS startups, is often considered to be the single most important metric that represents the health of these businesses. Today, I'm going to teach you how to understand, break down, and calculate net dollar retention. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going to cover five different subjects. The first is what is net dollar retention and why is it important? The second is we're going to dive into the components of net dollar retention. Third, we're going to cover the simple net dollar retention formula so you can understand the basic math behind this concept. And in sections four and five, we are going to talk about how to calculate net dollar retention using cohort analysis, which is the real way that software businesses are calculating their net dollar retention. Okay, let's get started. So which sector is this metric most important for? It's enterprise SaaS. So these are usually B2B software businesses. So here's the definition. Net dollar retention measures the percent change in monthly revenue for a group of customers over a specific period of time, meaning you have a start date and an end date, accounting for upsells, cross-sells, downgrades, and churn. So net dollar retention allows us to see if a group of customers is collectively spending more or less on a monthly basis over a period of time. For example, if we acquired 10 customers a year ago that initially were spending 20K per month, net dollar retention tells us whether today, a year later, they're spending collectively more, less, or the same 20K per month. So if they were spending 20K per month a year ago and today they're spending 20K per month as well, our net dollar retention would be 100%. So why does this matter? If our customers are spending more and more over their lifetime, even if we don't acquire new customers, our baseline revenue will continue to grow. And that's a very, very powerful dynamic. So investors love this sticky recurring revenue and high net dollar retention, meaning over 100%, and I'll show you some benchmarks below, means our customers love our product and we will have enormous growing and recurring cash flow streams for years to come. So there are only three factors that go into the net dollar retention calculation. The first is contraction revenue. So this is revenue that we lost from customers either downgrading or canceling their plans. The second is expansion revenue. So this is revenue that we gain from either upselling or cross-selling different products to our existing customer base. And the third is revenue at the start and the end of the period. So net dollar retention is always measured over a period of time. You're looking at revenue at the beginning and the end, and that's usually a 12-month period of time. So you need the total revenue from that cohort of customers at the start and the end of the specific period to understand the percent change over time. So we use NDR to track cohorts of customers through time. What is a customer cohort? It's just a group of customers who you track based on the initial purchase month, meaning that group all purchased for the very first time in the same month, and then you track their stream of subsequent purchases through time. So in order to show you the calculation for NDR, let's do it by looking at this very short case study below. So we acquired 10 customers in January 2022 who were initially spending 20K per month in the first month of their lifetime. So you see revenue at the start of the period for the cohort of 10 customers was 20K. Then by January 2023, so this is 12 months later, we had churned off or contracted 2,500 of revenue, so churned revenue here, but then we also had 5,000 in expansion revenue from other customers within that same cohort, and so we ended with revenue of 22,500 from that initial cohort. So we lost 2,500, we gained 5,000, and then so total we had 22,500 of revenue, recurring revenue from that cohort 12 months later. So the net dollar retention is revenue at the end of the period divided by revenue at the start of the period for those 10 customers, 113%. So is that good? Is that bad? Here are some benchmarks. So suboptimal NDR for enterprise software companies is under 100%. So in general, that can be evidence of a leaky bucket, meaning customers are churning, customers are contracting, and you're having difficulty keeping them on the product. Average would be considered 100 to 120%. And then the best-in-class companies generally have NDR of over 120%.
And an interesting fact, Snowflake um, famously had net dollar retention of over 170% for a long period of time, which was pretty much the highest number that investors had ever seen. And so that was a very exciting moment. Hey everyone, one quick announcement. I just wanted to let you know that registration for my training program, Finance for Startups, is now open. If you don't already know, Finance for Startups is a training bootcamp I designed to teach you everything I know about startups. It includes 20 hours of lectures, five hours of live case studies and open Q&A sessions, lifetime access to our community, personalized support for me, and more. If you're interested to learn about how you can secure your spot in the program, check out the link in the description below. Okay, back to the video. So first I'm gonna to explain to you uh, what a cohort analysis table is, and then I'll show you how to use this data to calculate net dollar retention for large groups of customers who you acquired over long periods of time. So, okay, intro to customer cohorts. So how do cohort analysis tables work? They organize your customer data by initial purchase month of customers. Then they show the stream of subsequent purchases of those cohorts of customers through time based on that initial purchase month. And these are the most accurate way to measure your customer retention, not only for software businesses, but for all business models. So first we're gonna look at a customer count cohort, then we're gonna look at a revenue cohort, and then finally we're gonna dive into the net dollar retention cohort. So uh, here's an example. So for April 2022, which is the April 2022 cohort, we acquired 14 customers who bought for the very first time in April 2022. And so we just call this month zero because this is basically month zero or day zero of the customer lifetime. So in the subsequent month, so April, May, so that's month one of their lifetime, those 14 customers came back and they purchased again. In the next month, so that would be June, they came back and they purchased again. So you can see that we acquired 14 customers and those customers stayed active for a period of nine months straight and we actually didn't churn a single customer. Now you'll see in other cohorts like the March cohort that we acquired 13 customers and four months into their lifetime we actually churned off one customer. And then you can see also at month 10 of their lifetime we, we churned off another customer. So one quick thing if you wanted to see all of the active customers that we had in April, would it be the 14 customers we acquired in April? No, it would, it would be the 14 customers, of course, that were new customers in April, but then it would be anyone we acquired in, in March, but in the second month of their lifetime. So those would be the March customers, the March cohort, who are recurring in April. Then it would be the February customers in the second month of their lifetime. It'd be the January customers in the third month of their lifetime. So the total customers that we have in April here would actually be 48 customers total. But we're focused on looking at within each cohort, what is the retention behavior? So the thing that you don't see in the customer count cohort is uh, revenue contraction and revenue expansion. So you can see if a customer cancels, but you don't know if they're downgrading or upgrading their plans. And so the revenue gives you that level of, of nuance. So here you can see for these 14 customers, they were spending 27,000. And so over time, even though it's just the same 14 customers over time, you can see that those 14 customers ended in month nine, uh, spending 32,900. So they did have uh, an increase in their revenue stream. And the reason why this ends is because we're saying January 2023 is the most recent month of data that we have. So this is the January 2023 month for all of these cohorts, even if we acquired them a long time ago, uh, what their revenue behavior is in January 2023. So to calculate net dollar retention, what we do is, let's go back to that April cohort. We look at uh, the 27,000, and if we were looking at it in month nine of their customer lifetime, we take the 32,900 and we divide it by the initial month. And so here you can see that the net dollar retention was 121% nine months into their lifetime. And so the reason why it's nice to cohortize this data 
is you can look across cohorts and compare. Are our newly acquired cohorts, let's say the cohorts we've acquired in the last six months, performing as well as our older cohorts? So in month three of their lifetime, we're seeing that our newer cohorts are at 103%, 111, 112, 88. Is this comparable to the older cohorts? I think in this scenario, you can see that, yes, it is comparable, but sometimes you'll see an improvement in your net dollar retention at different points in the customer lifetime, or sometimes you'll see worse net dollar retention at different points in the customer lifetime. So you want to split out all the cohorts to make sure you can really see with precision what is the customer retention behavior and what is the breakdown across all these different customers that have all of these different ages. But one thing that's really important is this is more for operational understanding of your net dollar retention. But generally, net dollar retention is measured on a 12-month cycle. So let me show you how to measure your sort of overall top-down company net dollar retention in the next section. So if an investor came to you and said, what is your net dollar retention? You wouldn't be able to show them this table because that doesn't give them one number. They want to know, okay, how well are you retaining customers? So here is how to look at your overall company-wide net dollar retention and to weight it based on the uh, overall revenue of each cohort. So here's how I would do it. So in month zero, you would just take the revenue divided by the revenue, so it would be 100%. In month one, what you do is you would take all of the recurring revenue you have and just divide it by the prior month and ignore January because that revenue has not had a chance to recur. So in month two, use the same strategy. So you take all of the revenue that you have, so that's January through November, and then you divide it by those exact same cohorts. So as you move forward through time, you have slightly less data for your older cohorts, but you just need to make sure that you're dividing your overall revenue that you have in that month by the initial cohort months. So you'll see that your net dollar retention as of month five was 104%. 104%, 112%, and we have less and less data as we move through time, but your 12-month net dollar retention, which is generally the number that investors are looking for, is 113%. So a lot of people ask me, okay, so how do I continue to calculate it through time? So let's put in some sort of dummy data, let's say this is then 23,000, this is 30,000. You basically just need to roll this formula forward. So what you would do if you have more than 12 months of data is you just continue to use this strategy. So you take um, your total recurring revenue that you had in that month and you just divide it by the revenue from 12 months prior. So if you do this, you would continuously get a 12 month net dollar retention and you can just drag this formula forward and just make sure that every month where you sum up the recurring revenue, you divide it by the total recurring revenue from those cohorts from 12 months before. And that gets you an overall top-down company net dollar retention that you can use through longer periods of time. Okay, so I hope this video helped you understand net dollar retention, why it's so important, and how to calculate it. As always, in the description below, you can download this Excel template completely for free. Also, if you want me to teach you everything I know about finance for startups in a small group with personalized support for me, check out the link in the description below for a chance to join the next cohort of my training program, Finance for Startups. And if you found this content valuable, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.